So let's start things off here on the play. And fine with this hand. Missing the third land, but other than that, it's really quite good. We don't know what we're up against, obviously. Um, but the we've got a lot of powerful cards. A lot of our best cards in the deck. Uh, signature stuff. We've got one removal spell we can play before drawing the third land if we want to. All right, so now we're seeing Ink Moth Nexus, and it, we are up against Affinity. All right, let's buckle our seatbelts here, um, and we'll see what we can do. This hand, it's, we would much rather be playing against a grindy deck, because a card like Crucible of Worlds, um, some of the Planeswalkers, once you get them online, um, they're a lot better, but... If our opponent just has an explosive draw here, that's worrisome. So yeah, our opponent does have a Mem Knight. So this looks like one of the more explosive draws from the affinity side. Um, and we see a bang, Artbound Ravager come down. So we're going to see what we can do here um, in terms of getting rid of some of these artifacts and trying to clear the board a little bit. Um, most likely we are going to want to just go ahead and dread bore this turn. The Ghost Quarter is a little bit of an awkward draw um, because it doesn't allow us to cast everything we want to. So we're going to go ahead and take two to get this Blood Crypt and Dreadbore the Arcbound Ravager, see if our opponent wants to sacrifice any artifacts here, or just simply let the Ravager die and makes the Mem Knight a little bit bigger. So it looks like the Ravager is going to die here. Um, next turn we're setting up for either Anger of the Gods or to cast a Crucible of Worlds. And Crucible of Worlds plus Ghost Quarter against Affinity is, is a good late game plan. But... Here's a Master of Ethereum. That's actually very good news for us. So, right now, Master of Ethereum is a 4-4, but when we cast this Anger of the Gods, the Memnite is going to go away, and then the Master of Ethereum is going to become a 3-3, and so that, too, um, is going to go away. So, that was a great, great turn for us, and now we're actually in a pretty commanding spot. Our opponent is running low on cards, Although that cranial plating is that that cranial plating is good, um, but our opponent doesn't actually have doesn't actually have that many creatures, so we can go ahead and get rid of the ink moth nexus if we want to. We can also just play this Liliana the Veil this turn, which I like. So I think the first thing we do here is play the Liliana. And we're going to tick it up and discard this second copy of Liliana in hand. And there's the Galvanic Blast. So that's why we didn't Ghost Quarter beforehand is we wanted to protect ourselves a little bit. Now... We can go ahead and Ghost Quarter away the Ink Moth. Our opponent likely has something like uh, one basic mountain in their deck. Um, or one basic island. Okay, that's fine. Um, but we have the Crucible in hand, so we can simply rebuy our Ghost Quarter. Here's a Vault Scourge. We can make our opponent sacrifice that with our Liliana if we want to. So let's do that. And this is basically the perfect opportunity to land Crucible of Worlds and get a Ghost Quarter back from the graveyard. Okay. 
And our opponent basically has no choice here but to make the plays that they are making. It just turns out that they're not going to work out. Um, so we can we have no problems now cashing our Liliana in. And we can actually just go ahead and play Nahiri now. And push towards going ultimate immediately. And our opponent's basically just dead here. I uh, don't think there's any sequence that is going to get our opponent out of the pickle that they are in currently. We don't even really need to discard anything. Um... Basically doesn't matter too much what we do here. We're going to go get Emrakul on our next turn and that's going to do it. So, Going on to the sideboard, we were... Those plays, uh, those early plays really ended up li lining up for us, um, what our opponent was doing. So after board, um, we do have two copies of Stony Silence, which is of course our best card in this matchup. Uh, we've also got a copy of Wear Tear, which can destroy an artifact. Um, we saw Anger of the Gods be good. I think we probably want the third one for this matchup. We can take out some of our discard here. Uh, Wall of Omens is also pretty weak. So I'm fine with taking out the Wall of Omens. And I think we probably want another Ghost Quarter. Um, another Ghost Quarter and another Crucible to be able to lock up the game later. And so we can take out a Liliana of the Veil. Um, just because on the draw, Liliana of the Veil is really not where you want to be. Um, Painful Truths, similarly... I'm fine with boarding in the Painful Truths. Um, so yeah. We're going to go down to two copies of Lily. And just make our deck as removal heavy, heavy as possible. L Liliana on the draw. Some of our Planeswalkers on the draw. If our opponent has a really good start, um, they're not going to match up well. So this is... Another one of those weird hands. Uh, it's a one land hand. We've got a, a discard spell and a stony silence. I think we keep it um, because we do have a stony. If we draw the second land, I think we're very favored, uh, likely, likely favored. Uh, but it just depends what our opponent's doing. There's going to be some draws where we're just going to lose, but there's going to be others where we play the stony silence and we just basically win on the spot. All right, so we drew the land. Um, we want to cast this Inquisition, but there's definitely a downside to doing so, and that's that we can't, we wouldn't be able to play the Stony Silence on our next turn. So I'm just gonna play the Shambling Vents and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. The Inquisition is basically irrelevant now, um. So we're hoping our opponent didn't have something like a plating, but it looks like our opponent does have a plating. Um, so that's going to get strapped onto this Ornithopter here. And we're going to take a bunch of damage here. So this attack is going to bring us... Well, this, this attack is, is really bad for us. So now all of a sudden this Stony Silence is not even good enough. So we're just going to have to play a land and pass back. Um, and and we kind of regret not playing the Inquisition on turn one, but it just, it didn't feel, it didn't feel right. So we'll see. I mean, we definitely could just die here. Um, our opponent has the option of... Equipping the cranial plating at instant speed so that even if we were to path 
to exile this Ornithopter, we would still lose. So, yeah, I mean, if we had Inquisition on turn one, we would have seen the plating, and then we could have taken it, but then we're going to take a big hit, our opponent's going to play the Memnite, and then we're going to untap and still not be able to cast the plating because our Shambling Vents came into play tapped. Now, if we were on the play, we would just have a turn two plating this game. I mean, a turn two Stony Silence this game, and... Our opponent's plating wouldn't do anything, and we would very likely win, but um, as it turns out, our opponent just has um, a very good draw here. And it looks like they see the play, so of equipping the cranial plating at instant speed, and I think we're going to, we are going to lose here, um, just this, this exact turn, but we'll see. So, yep, the plane, the cradle plating is getting strapped on to a, a pest, and yep, that's going to do it. Wow, uh, pretty explosive draw there from the Affinity player. And I don't necessarily think that means we should do anything differently as far as sideboarding goes. It just means um, we're happy to be on the play this game. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. All right, so once again, Stony Silence. No, no Stony Silence in the sand. Um, we have a Lingering Souls and a Path. Oof, I think we keep it. Uh, it's definitely not. I mean, we want. We've been wanting lands this whole. Like last game, we just wanted lands, right? So now we have our lands. Uh, we just need our our big, um, our spells. If we draw Stony Silence, that's, of course, our best draw. But um, Lingering Souls is, is good against Affinity. Um, our, they have a lot of flyers. They've got cards like Signal Pest, which we saw. And so this is one of our best cards in the matchup. And that's a big reason why I think this hand is a keep. So we have access to Path to Exile here if we want it. Um, so we'll see if our opponent has something. What our opponent has this turn is going to be super important. So it, there is a Ravager here coming down. And also a copy of Vault Scourge. So we have the option of just getting rid of this Ravenger right here and casting the Path to Exile on it. I think I like that. Um, the card is very dangerous and we just kind of want it off the table. We'll see what our opponent elects to modular onto. Although it could be something like a our opponent has okay, so it looks like it the play may be here to move in on the Ink Moth Nexus a little bit. And that's gonna mean that a ghost quarter is gonna be a good draw to get rid of the Nexus. But it looks like our opponent's in the tank here a little bit about what they would like to do here in terms of how to best use this this Arcbound Ravenger. All right, so it looks like the play is going to be to make this Ink Moth Nexus into a 3-3. Three, three. And we drew a bolt, so that's potentially an answer to that Nexus. But going to cast the Lingering Souls now. Um, we can afford to take one hit of three poison, but it, it definitely, or four poison, um, it depends what else our opponent has got here um, in hand. So this Blink Moth Nexus is going to potentially be able to save the Ink Moth Nexus from Lightning Bolt. And it looks like this our opponent also has a plating, so we'll see where this plating is going to go. Alright, it looks like it's just going to be a, a three, 
a three point poison swing. So we're going to take the that that poison hit. And yeah, I mean, we haven't drawn all that well um, since our opening hand. We basically only cast the cards that were in our opening hand. Um, and our opponent has a plating, has an ink moth. We're not out of it. We've got some flyers, so we should be able to at least make, um, at minimum, some chump locks and stay alive. And we'll see if there's an opportunity to use this bolt efficiently. So I think here, um, I actually like just going ahead and blocking with three of our spirits. If our opponent elects to pump the Ink Moth with the Blink Moth, then we can respond to that with a Lightning Bolt. So this exchange is pretty good for us. So we were basically able to trade the Lightning Bolt for the Ink Moth Nexus and not take any damage there. But unfortunately, we're still bricking off. So I am going to actually fire up the Shambling Vent and get in there. We don't really have anything better to do for the turn. We're still going to keep our spirits back. Um, and it looks like our opponent found another Blink Moth, so we're, we're going to have to start blocking off with, with these spirits here. And our opponent has the option to equip the Vault Scourge with the plating and simply use it as a way to gain a bunch of life here. So similarly, our opponent can pump the Nexus to becoming a two toughness creature. So we're just going to go ahead and double block here. And there's a second plating. Okay, that could be a problem. But our opponent's out of cards here. Um, so we're just going to continue on with the plan of suiting up shambling vents, but this ornithopter our opponent has in play could actually finish us off here. I shouldn't say finish us off. We are at a high life total, but double plating is really, really powerful. And it looks like we're almost inevit inevitably going to be taking a decent sized hit this turn. So our opponent is equipping both platings to the Ornithopter and attacking. If we take the hit, um, that would mean going all the way down to 12. If we don't take it, sorry, if we don't take it, we can trade our two spirits for the Ornithopter. Then the Vault Scourge and the Nexus become a big problem. I think we just take it. It kind of sucks. But I'm going to take it. And our opponent can pump activate the Blink Moth. So that's going to be a total of 14 damage uh, coming across here. But we're really just playing towards our outs at this point. And we have a lot of them. We have a lot of removal spells that would be capable of getting the job done here. There's a land. So this turn we pretty much are going to have to block with some spirits now. Um, we're forced into the, this situation. Because we've only draws, I mean, let's face it, we, we've drawn three spells in the game. Um, if we had drawn 
more spells, we'd be in a great, great, great position. Um, as it is, we are flooding out. Um, we have the option of double blocking the Ornithopter this turn. We also have to be worried about the Nexus, uh, worried about the Vault Scourge. We'll see if our opponent wants to make a big attack or a small attack here. Um, or if, if our opponent has something, we might actually just be dead. Um, so we'll see. I mean, the, the hits with the Shambling Vets have sort of kept our life total above, you know, the danger zone, but um, double plating, that will change things around quite easily. So, assuming we block with our spirits and stay alive, we are going to want to draw another Lingering Souls. That's probably our best draw here. Um, so yeah, we want, we want, we want a Lingering Souls for sure. So our opponent smartly is double equipping on Vault Scourge. And there is a copy of Ghost Quarter. That's not gonna do it. It's not gonna It's not gonna get us out of this. So we can fire up a shambling vent and get in with it. But I believe we are actually just dead here. We can Ghost Quarter our opponent's Blink Moth Nexus. But we're just going to take the lethal hit from the Vault Scourge. Um, it's pretty unfortunate that we basically bricked off really hard. Uh, this game, I think think uh, this matchup is pretty good for the from the martyr side but yep that's gonna be it 